Good morning, everyone. This is the end of week eight of our training plan. Uh, so there actually isn't a whole lot to talk about in terms of a recap. It was a it was a very easy week compared to what we've been doing. We we had only three rides planned for this week. The first one we did on Monday it was just a one hour easy zone two ride, and we we ended up doing that one outside, uh, just around our, our neighborhood area. Then there was one uh, map effort workout that we did in the middle of the week, and that was similar to last week in the sense that it was two minute the zone five efforts with two minute zone two recoveries, but it was only half the volume. It was only three rounds of that versus six that we did last week. So that was, that was pretty easy too. Uh, and then today we're doing a our endurance ride of the week, although it probably will won't feel quite as much like endurance compared to last week because of the duration. This one is going to be around 20 miles and roughly two hours, somewhere in, in that range. We're again going to ride around the, the Reading, Connecticut area um, because we've really come to like the roads there. And uh, it's it's a pretty nice day today. It's, it's it's still in the 20s right now, but probably by the time we get out there riding, it'll be in the, the 30s or 40s. It's supposed to get up to around 50 today, so um, I mean, the warmer the better, as far as I'm concerned. So I hope it gets warmer. That's about it as far as our training this week. Uh, one thing that we're going to one thing that's new today that we're very excited about is we have our new cassettes our 1134 cassettes installed on both our bikes thanks to joy she's uh, become a pro at uh at um, bike mechanics so she got those installed yesterday and we took a quick spin up our street just just to, to test them out. Our, our street's uh, roughly a five percent grade, and uh, it was feeling very very easy to go up our street. So hopefully th that means that uh, we'll have a little bit more gearing options um, to use for climbing with this uh, larger cassette. And uh, we're going to give it a shot today and see how that goes. Uh, our hope is that we can. We can maintain a slightly higher cadence when going uphill. We noticed from our recent metrics with our our uh, our Wahoo that our cadence is pretty slow going up hills, and um, I mean it's to be expected that your cadence is going to slow down. Um, but that's because we also were running 1128s. When we were on any kind of significant um, grade, it, our our RPMs were either in the 50s or sometimes sometimes below 50, which is you know getting a little too much into the grindy category. Um, so we're hoping that so with the 1134, hopefully we have uh, the ability to go at a slightly higher cadence going uphill. You know maybe around 60 or so. So let's do some time traveling, and I'm going to show you guys the pain that we've endured mainly me, <laughs> yesterday changing out the cassette, which isn't a problem because I've done it a couple of times already, but we had to also replace our chains because the chains that we have currently were too short because they, we had an 1128 cassette in the back. What ended up happening was it would, when we, if we ever accidentally shift from uh, the big ring to the smallest cog, it would immediately stop and the chain would actually uh, get caught in the derailleur. So uh, obviously we don't want that to happen uh, because that's a big accident waiting to happen. So uh, let's do some time traveling and uh, I'll show you guys the footage uh, yesterday. Hey guys, so I'm here in my garage and what I'm going to do today is I'm switching over, um, well, actually I'm fixing the chain on my bike and switching over the cassette uh, and Jason's bike. Um, and the reason why I'm fixing my chain is because I just recently put in the 1134 cassette and I believe the chain is too long and so 
it's causing the derailleur to kind of collapse into itself. So I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But for now, I have to move my car. So we have some more room. Uh, I have some more room to uh, put the bikes uh, on the floor. So I'm using Jason's Jason's bike as a guide. Uh, you can see here that the derailleur, now I'm at the largest chain ring, uh, largest cog in the back, and you could see how the uh, derailleur here is uh, positioned. And so I am going to do the same with my bike. I'm going to position it in the large chain ring and the largest cog and position the derailleur that way. I, even though this is crossing, the bike is still able to move and I want that before the chain was too short and so the chain would get stuck, which would prevent me from moving. So if I make a mistake, I can still at least uh, be moving. So already I've encountered a problem. Um, I made a mistake by uh, not removing the link next to the quick link. And so I removed the, this tiny piece here from the chain and I can't actually rejoin them without the quick link. I do have a quick link on here, but it's in a different spot and I made a mistake by not looking at that first. So I pretty much, hopefully, this is not a lost cause and uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I think what I'm gonna do is try to get um, some pliers or something and try to get this little piece into, back into this uh, opening here uh, so I can close the chain, rejoin this chain together, close it, and then Here's the quick link that I was telling you about. Remove about a chain or two off of this quick link. Ah, <sighs> just such a newbie mistake. It was a success, even though it took me, I don't know, two hours to do this thing. It looked like an hour and a half, two hours. So, it was about an, hour. an hour? Okay, that's longer than I expected to spend time on it. But now I can spend, I can actually use uh, one, two, three, four, five of the cogs uh, in the cassette. Uh, using the switching over to the small chain ring so uh, let me show you guys 
what that looks like and you can actually pay attention to the derailleur there uh, how that's not touching uh, the chains aren't rubbing against each other So you could see that there is some, uh, there is rubbing here um, when we're looking at this this cog, but I'm not going to be using that anyway. So I think it's a this was a success conversion. Uh, now we gotta do Jason's bike. Okay, so we struggled a lot with removing the cassette on Jason's bike and so we he ended up going to the bike shop and hopefully they'll remove it and I'll just put the cassette on and I've already got the chain pre-measured so it would be four chain links removed from my chain so it would be similar to his uh, and but anyway, um, tested the bike out. Uh, we have a little bit of a hill here in our house and um, it worked well. I was able to really get up the hill easily. I'm looking forward to getting Jason's uh, all set so that way he can test it out himself and he can also enjoy um, the climbs. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed my struggle as a newbie to bike mechanics. We did finally got the uh, both cassettes in and chains in properly, tested it to make sure that there wasn't the chain wasn't too long and dragging. So everything's good, and we're gonna test that out today on our ride, like Jason said. Um, so hopefully this is this will work. We're gonna test it out even though it's a recovery ride. We still have uh, 20 miles at 1700 feet of gain. So we'll test it out. There's a climb coming back anyway going back to why we did it um, to really get better uh, Pedaling efficiency the mantra that goes spinning is winning and hopefully that's that'll happen with us. It's also going to save Jason on his knees, both of our knees actually, uh, from the grinding that happens when we go up steep hills. And there are you know, a number of steep hills around here. Uh, Connecticut isn't completely flat. I think that with lower gearing, higher cadence, that will hopefully uh, benefit us in the, in the climbing. The, pr the thing is with low gearing, we're going a little slower depending, I guess it depends on what our cadence is like. And so with that being said, we're gonna be moving slower and uh, that means there's not a potential for any KOMs or QOMs.
I love the new cassette. The climb was, uh, the climb that we just did, it would have been a very slow grind with the 1128 in the grandpa gear. And I might have actually given up. I'm not sure if I would have been able to make it, but if I did, it would have been a real slow grind with the 1134 cassette. Actually was able to stay one notch above the grandpa gear and I felt like my cadence was faster and my speed was faster. So we averaged 13.3 uh, uh, miles per hour today so uh, faster than our normal. Okay so does my theory hold true? Does high cadence actually uh, result to faster speed? Well, well going uphill I, I think it does at least that's what we um, that's what we experienced today the past couple of times we've ridden outside it's only been we hovered around 12 miles an hour so yeah I mean the climb the last climb that we did um, it was brutal but it was also great because we had that low gearing and we were talking about how just higher cadence allows you to activate uh, a different muscle group instead of using your quads all the time and I tend to when at least you know Jason and I when we're grinding we're you know we tend to go for our quads as our dominant muscle to to get us on steep climbs but um, with the lower uh, with the higher cadence and lower gearing, it allowed us to kind of activate our glutes and our hamstrings, and so it kind of alleviated the quads. Um, and that was a super fun climb. I think it was a little over a mile long, but we'll see uh, the stats when we get back. Anyways, guys, um, that's it for this week's. We will see you again next week for another uh, round of training going to be it's going to ramp up again yeah ramping up to i think over seven hours with a three hour endurance ride so we will take you along with us again with that until next time bye bye bye